Many people think about mass shootings as a modern event, but what if I told you two examples actually happened well before any of the events you've heard of, and for some of you, a hundred or so years before you thought, in 1891. But before we delve into this video, just a quick reminder to like and subscribe if you want to see more true crime content like this. I aim to put out a new video every Tuesday, so make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified when they are released. So I have to say that to make my manager happy, but you have to do all of the above or she'll get bummed out, so I'll just give you a moment. Okay, great. So first, we have to discuss definitions. It shocked me when I learned this, but the FBI doesn't actually have a definition for mass shooting. They have a definition for mass murder, which is four or more people being killed in an incident. But this is too broad, as it involves more possibilities than just gun violence. And in my mind, the intent is the same regardless of how many people actually die, because if somebody shoots, for example, at 14 people, they likely have homicidal intent towards all of them. People who grew up around responsible gun owners, or who are responsible gun owners, would be the first to tell you that you should always assume a gun is loaded and never pointed at anybody. And so anybody who does that is purposely being dangerous. But because the FBI hasn't officially defined the term, there are several possible definitions of mass shooting. And most would exclude things like shootouts between civilians because these are slightly different than a mass shooting. I like the gun violence archives definition that a modern mass shooting is a single shooting event with four or more victims not including the perpetrator. The gun violence archive does include familiacides, though some other sources would exclude them. I believe these events are too often tied to domestic violence to separate them unless they're clearly an accident like a suicide or a murder-suicide that accidentally kills somebody unintended. But I do exclude war and war events, which is why I wouldn't consider the Enoch Brown school massacre in 1764 the first mass shooting, because though it's certainly a vile example of an incident where many people were shot, it's a war crime as it's technically a raid during Pontiac's war. Granted, one that was so heinous that the tribe was shocked by the horror its warriors had committed when they found out about it. But given this definition, a single shooting event with four or more victims not including the perpetrator, people often still think about Columbine, the University of Texas, any of the going postal events, or the walk of death as the first mass shootings. Yet, these are really just events that have captured the minds of people because they are so interesting, not because they were the firsts. And as a side note, as a true crime researcher, those events are so much easier to talk about because so much is widely known about them, and it's really just a matter of synthesizing several sources that cover the same things really well, which sadly kind of perpetuates a cycle of the same things being talked about over and over again and thus known. Before 1891, shooting events were usually accidental, clearly a one-person revenge killing, part of a crime, or otherwise had too few victims to meet the definition, with the one obvious example being the Enoch Brown school massacre which, as I've already explained, I'm excluding. But in 1891, there were two incredibly senseless shootings that meet this definition of modern mass shooting, and both take place at religious schools. The first one happened March 28, 1891, when a man fired a shotgun into a crowd of mixed-race students and faculty after a school exhibition at Parson Hall Schoolhouse at the New Zion Church, a mixed-race church in Liberty, Mississippi. This incident injured 14 people, some seriously. Uh, Mr. Baldwin Hayes lost an eye from the event. This, as far as I can tell in my research, was the first mass shooting in the United States, and it arguably ushered in what would be a bloody history of race-related killings in the early 20th century. Unfortunately, the perpetrator was never caught, and to this day, no one knows who he is. About two weeks later, on April 9, 1891, there was another tragedy. 70-year-old James Foster walked by some children playing out front of St. Mary's Parochial School in this Newburgh, New York, with a they shotgun a on his shoulder, before stopping and purposely aiming and opening fire. Luckily, he fired mustard seed-sized shot, which I imagine is pretty similar to birdshot. He injured five male students, 
all of whom lived, though a boy named Barnes had 60 pellets in his face and hands. James was arrested. According to the New York Times, he was declared demented, by which I think they mean dementia praecox, which is kind of like an early understanding of schizophrenia. And at the time, they were massively shocking events that rocked the world. Unfortunately, these events seem to be much more common, and many people decry that these kind of shootings are clear examples of the downfall of our culture. To some, because we've become more secular, and to others, because we're too backward thinking. And I, of course, have my own theories about the causes of these incidents that I may talk about here someday. But for now, I'll say that it's very interesting to me that the first known modern mass shootings took place at religious schools about two weeks apart from each other. And despite the fact that neither shooter really seemed to be connected to either of the schools or the churches in any way, it's still interesting to me because the narrative I hear so often is that things have gotten so bad that they're shooting schools and shooting churches, but both sadly have a rich history of violence in a certain way of looking at it. They are the ushering in of that history. And to be honest, there have been some heinous events at both that many people aren't aware of, which I may cover in time. History is an open invitation to question our beliefs. And I think these examples hint that beliefs, like we live in horribly violent times and that society is crumbling, really aren't so simple. Because history is full of heinous events. And heinous events that happened in pure places or were done by pure people. For example, who would think a 70-year-old man would randomly shoot some schoolboys in the 1890s? Even now, the idea of a grandpa doing something so heinous is just difficult for the mind to wrap itself around. But it happens. And if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll join me for my next video next Tuesday. It's a much longer one with a lot more research, but I promise it'll deliver. And at this point, if you've seen that one, just like, subscribe, share, or watch one of these.